Hey folks, welcome back to Saxon House part seven, where we are doing the wattle and daub on the side of the house. And uh, it's, it's kind of slow progress because we've got a lot of mixing to do. We're using a combination of a bit of soil, sort of mud, mixing, with, mixing it with some clay, uh, and then adding some straw as well, just to help bind it all together. And uh, yeah, it's, we're actually on kind of day two now. So we're a few days later from when we did this first bit down here and it's starting to set, it's starting to go a bit hard. A few of you have asked what, uh, what's going to happen, the rain's going to just wash all the clay away because we've got no roof. But actually what we've been doing is when we leave the place, the woodland, we've been putting a tarp just on the lower level of the house just to protect that clay so that it can dry a bit more naturally without getting wet all the time. So this is the one of the sides that we've started and there's, there's kind of sp slight small cracks in there. We tried to put a lot of straw in this mix just to keep it all bound together because we've only got the way we did the wattle like i said in the previous episode wasn't properly by going in and out and in and out and in and out because we only had dead pine which meant that it's not very flexible so it would snap quite easily so we only had to use we could only use short sections which meant it only went in so it's basically the wall is one stick thick and it shouldn't be that when you're doing water and door but should be in and out to create a double thickness really so that's probably why there's some cracks, but that's why we used a lot more straw in the mix to help bind it so that it wouldn't sag and fall through as much as it would do. But yeah, it's starting to go off now. It's starting to set a bit. I can still push it around. This is a couple of days later and I can still push it around and it's still fairly kind of squidgy. So the sun, we've got a good forecast next week of quite a bit of sun. Whether that cracks it too quickly, we don't really know. Um, but it's, yeah. I still got to go. I'm still debating whether to go over these outside sticks with the clay, or just in between here to begin with. We're also going to wattle the inside, uh, clay the inside as well, which I'll show you in a minute. Zoom out a bit. It's looking pretty good there. So we've got this section here. Now this is where I did it properly. This is how you should do a uh, proper wattle. So it kind of goes in, out, and then back in, and that creates this gap like this, which is you then put all the clay in that void. Obviously it goes in and it builds up on itself, kind of like when you're building a house and you have the breeze blocks and you infill the concrete into the breeze blocks. That's essentially what this is like here with this wattle. That's how it should be done traditionally is in and out, in and out, in and out. Now we actually did quite a bit of hiking and we found some small birch saplings. So that part of the wattle is all small pieces of birch, which was green. So we were able to bend it. And that's why we could go in and out, in and out without it snapping. So this will be interesting to see when I clay this or when we both clay this, how, mu how much better that clay will sit, that daubing will sit on that wattle compared to just the one stick thickness over there. Quite interesting stuff we're learning along the way. It's good fun. Thank you for sticking along and I hope you enjoy this episode. How are you finding it, Dad? Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. It's like uh, the worst thing from hell. <laughs> that or I, debarking? I, I think yeah, it's a toss up between this and, and bark peeling. Bark peeling? What about draw knifing? Yeah, is that. I just feel I should have some form of either African or Indian chant, <laughs> like they do when they're pounding their corn. <laughs> Hey, I'm a hey, 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 h
cow dung, I believe, being the main one, probably horses, and to be honest, any kind of dung that they could get their hands on, manure. But uh, yeah, for us, we're just pounding away. We, 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 you know, I think we'd be trespassing probably if we went onto a farmer's field and stole a load of poo. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> not that he'd he'd probably be grateful, the yeah. farmer. <laughs> But um, yeah, so that's traditionally what would be used. However, we are just going with clay, mud, and straw. That's the three ingredients for this door. But it's a very simple, basic kind of mixture. And to be honest, I'm not sure ratio-wise of what to use. Obviously, most of it should be clay, I'm guessing. Um, but soil-wise, or well, mud, we've used about probably 30, a 70 sort of 30 mix. Something like that, yeah. 70, yeah, 70% 70 kind of clay, 30% soil, mud and uh, yeah i don't know what half of straw as well equal straw is equal weight in straw almost or well, we equal, got, equal we got, density we got dry weather coming so we got dry out we had a lot of rain haven't we we've had so much rain lately yeah. finally <laughs> but um so good for mixing yeah not so great for drying exactly yeah when it, so, when it does dry well, i think that's good. i think that's good now. that's good think? to go should we bucket that i think so how do you think that consistency is i'd say that's pretty good yeah pretty good that's pretty oh, it's still sticking to the ground well, isn't you it? want it to stick that's yeah. the main thing don't you We've got plenty of straw in there. Yeah, actually, the straw goes a long way. That surprised Doesn't it? me. Doesn't it? pads it out loads. To be honest, it, uh, it has actually surprised me. I would suggest a routine here. Of, I'll give you a bucket. You start the dolby, and I'm messed up anyway. You're permanently on it, yeah. That's Mashing. not the one to shake hands with. <laughs> and then I'll come back and get another mix going. What do you think? I think, I think so, yeah. Let's get this one on the wall first, and then uh, I'll give you a hand. So Dad, I was saying to the subscribers that this is the single stick wattle here. Yes. And this is the, the kind of proper green stuff, the proper wattling that we did. And we compacted it all down. We probably could push it down a bit further, but this should be interesting. I reckon it'd be easier. It should bind and the sticks are much more rigid because they're not dead. Do you find they're not flexing as much? Well, the holes are smaller as well, aren't they? So it's taking the clay better. It's taking the clay. It's going to stick. Yeah, pushed it right in. Yeah. And then we will do the other side as well, the inside, just to make it all more secure as well. It's therapeutic, I find it quite well, therapeutic. Well, you can see if they were building these places like six men. Yeah. How easy would that be for six, six Half or, the village would six just build one house. to build one house. They'd clay this all in one day, this easy. Would be easily done in one day. Probably half a day. And then they'd be going over tea and cakes. <laughs> When were cakes invented? <laughs> no, mind. no, that's, go, that's a theory that time. Now. Who invented cakes? I know I invented the wheel because it's <laughs> on the wheelbarrow. <laughs> you can see on the inside, we've still got quite a bit of work to do. Uh, we're smoothing it out on the inside, anything that's squeezing through here. And we're just going to smooth it out, but we're also going to re-clay over the inside as well. So a bit more insulation, a bit more stability. You know, this is still fairly, it's rigid. It's going hard a bit, but I can still push it with my thumb. You can see Dad pushing it through in the gaps there, squeezing it through so it should all bind and basically infill in between these sticks and create hopefully a rigid wall that, that can last a long time. It's a bit like, well, where did that term come from? Door. You know, no, it's like, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas. Today we have the Green Magicians. Please give them a round of applause to Wattle and Daub. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it seems like to me. What a name. It sounds like a couple of comedians. Well, a couple of comedians are doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You're what I'm doing. Yeah. You can see from the inside here, there's very little gaps now. That's where we did the, the, the proper wattle as such going in and out. That's where we did the straight sticks. We've still got to fill in the gaps up here. We're going to put some moss and some more sticks up there just to fill that gap near the top. But you can see pretty much there's no light 
coming through this bottom area at all. And obviously we're going to clay over the top of that like we did over here. And we've still got to clay into the, in these gaps here to insulate it. But what we've done over here, and this is uh, the back, so we've not wattled this too well, this bit. But we've actually got moss in between the gaps to help pad it all out and give it more insulation. And also fill out those voids where we hadn't wattled it so well. We're just padding it out with a bit of insulation and using the natural moss as that, that kind of insulation material. We can just cram it in the gaps like that and then clay over the top of those sticks this side as well and it's going to trap it and pinch it and uh, give us an insulated house but it's starting to look much much better now much better again just filling in these top gaps up here and then that's pretty much done ready for roof the back is looking awesome we've played right up to the top of the kind of uh, the start of the gable end there and it's really coming along now just got this small bit to do over here and again those gaps over there and then it's pr pretty much ready
Sausages are cooked well, aren't they? Oh, yeah. I was just thinking that. Mm. Yeah, they have cooked well. Crispy on the outside. Way clean the burn. And then you burn this off, don't you, to clean it? You just, uh, yeah. You use a uh, wire, wire mesh. Um, Does that come with the Brillo kit? thing? Yeah, just a little Brillo thing. Wire brush, really. You can see that oil still burning off. Yeah, it's smoking off as well, yeah. it's burning off. Yeah. I should lift it off, really, but too hungry. Licking into it, isn't it? Do you reckon? Well, I don't know. I thought you cleaned it when you walked no, out. I, I thought, what is that? that? Maybe they tried to climb it. Does it burn? That should be black. They tried to climb it, maybe. It doesn't look. Yeah, it does look like mini scrubs. Right. Yeah, look. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> That's going to be enough to, to heat it. Definitely. Easy, I tell you. Yeah, just don't. What did you think of the breakfast then, Dad? Breakfast is good, very good. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> think I'd eat two eggs. I didn't think I was a two-egg man. But if you, if <laughs> what you do, you mean? if you do enough digging you, and sawing and hacking, you become a two-egg man. <laughs> that was really good, actually. Quite impressed. We were using the. Um, I've had these quite a while now, actually. I've, I think I've had them nearly a year, um, but I've not used them as much because we've got the fire pits here. I've used this uh, fire bridge. It's called quite a lot in videos, but I've not used the fire bowl, which is raised up off the ground and obviously the um the the Top skillet tray, yeah. kind of griddle over there but the idea is that because it's so peaty here on this ground you guys who know who've been following the channel for ages and watching the bushcraft camp videos it's so peaty and in the hot weather it dries out and it's like tinder isn't it it was like yeah, it will be, yeah. you could literally put a ferro rod to it and it would just go so um yeah this is a, this is a really handy contraption. It's, it's from a company called Petromats. I've never seen that before. Raised yeah, fire. I think so it's they're, a good idea. they're really good, and they, it, it's like German-made gear. It's all high quality, like high hard-wearing gear, isn't it? Like yep. steel, wrought iron, cast iron. Really good, really good quality gear, actually. Um, and it's just ideal for situations like this, especially summertime cooking, where we still want to have a fire. It's all raised up off the ground, um, and then actually that's where it's quite well, hasn't it? That fire bridge going over the bowl. Yeah, it's ideal. It's ideal. pretty good. Yeah. It's a really yeah. good setup. So. Yeah, we're, we're, we're pleased with the progress we've made on this episode. It's, it was all focused on clay daubing, and um, we got there, haven't we? We've done the whole of the outside of the, yeah. the Saxon house now. It's just up to the inside, which is... At, that's sort of the hard bit, isn't it? Because you, it's so demoralising. You've done this whole outside, and then you look inside, yeah. I've got to do the same thing again on the inside. I'd, so say, I'd say we used... How many bags? I'd say we used just over probably half a tonne of clay. So with the that's, clay, that's carried in. With the clay, we we obviously the ground that we're on here is gravel. It's pretty much pure gravel. You go straight through the soil layer, the peat layer, and it's onto gravel, isn't it? And yeah, it's horrible yeah, yeah, to it's dig. Horrible, horrible. You guys saw that in in like episode two where we were digging the pit. It is all gravel here. So there's no clay, and obviously with with wattle and daub, you definitely need clay. Mm. So we actually got the clay from your garden, didn't we? I've got no garden left. There's a massive hole. <laughs> So we dug, yeah, we dug the clay from Dad's garden and we basically shipped it in in sacks. And um, do you know, I'm so grateful that we've done that. That's That's been really, really handy to be able the to... The clay, properly, yeah. To be able yeah. to use the clay that's still from the local area. Our house isn't too far from here. It's just nice to have that local area. Lo it's all built still with local clay. Well, you were looking at pottery, refined pottery clay. <laughs> yeah. At 12 pounds a sack. I know, that would have been a bad we move, wouldn't it? 30 sacks in. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, what a good job. Dad's got the clay in his garden <laughs> and a big hole. Yeah, no, it's been good. Um, we've learnt a lot actually about that. Now what we're going to do, because this is going to bake in the sun, we've got some warm weather coming for the mm. next seven days at least. I think, Dad, we yep. should tarp it. Purely because that direct yeah, sunlight yeah, yeah. is going to really crack it. And when you think of clay that you put when, you, when you're at school and you're using pottery clay and things like that, you tend to wrap it back in plastic bags yeah, afterwards. Yeah, keep the moisture in. Yeah, I think we should tarp that so it dries yeah, yeah, slowly. Yeah, yeah. Plastic over the top of yeah. it. Yeah. What do yeah. you guys think? Do you think we should tarp it 
and let it uh, let it dry slowly or let the direct sunlight on it. I personally think it's going to crack really bad if it if we leave it out in the sunlight all the time. Well, it's sort of dappled in here because we're in the forest, so it's not hugely direct sunlight. That's true, but yeah. there's two options. We had a big rainstorm when we were doing it before, yeah. so you have to tarp it because it will wash away. But equally, you don't want too much sun. It's, you know, like yeah. we, we're, we're, we're always constantly trying to battle the expansion and contraction of clay. And I know because my house is built on clay. So, yeah. you know, that's what it's called, subsidence and heave, where the yeah. ground expands. And it ground really expands. does move, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, it moves well, hugely. Well, you get cracks in the house, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, you know, we do get movement in the house as well. Yeah, and you absolutely. Had the, you had the, under your kitchen, you had that... What is it? Well, the clay, it? the reason we got so much clay there is obviously most places with clay would have a, <clears throat> a topsoil, let's say loam or just earth, black earth. But when I ripped half the building down to rebuild it, we had to go through what they call building regulations. Doubtless all countries are the same, but they put pilings in. They had to pile it, so they had to excavate down with a big, <laughs> a giant auger. <laughs> it's a Scots auger <laughs> about this wide. Digger. <laughs> and they went down until they get a certain level of pressure where they're happy to pour the concrete 27 feet down really? in my house the yeah to where the wow. kitchen and bathroom bedroom is, is deep. Uh, to pay and you're paying by the foot so <laughs> i used to stand there watching this drill and screw go down and my my wallet's going with it <laughs> it's going on. no it's all going down oh dear no it's good it's interesting though working with clay is actually really interesting it's yeah. not an easy thing to work with to get right but we're really hopeful that the clay sticks and it stays and it dries. We're not gonna do the inside clay. There's no point until the outside clay is dry because then we can slap it up against it and it's got a rigid backdrop. If we did it straight away now, it's just Might gonna push, push each side, side yeah. yeah, and fall out. Um, but we're so close, you know, the next bit, the biggest bit is the roof. Yeah. Now, traditionally, here in the UK certainly, Saxon houses were built with thatch. Now we don't, we don't know for certain because it was so long ago, we can only go by what we found from archeological excavations really. And to be honest, from what I was researching, they've only really found the kind of foundations of the house, of a Saxon house, and the, the sort of beam support and beam posts, the vertical post holes, that's what they've kind of found, and they've judged it on, it's all kind of based on that, so we don't really know what they use for a roofing material. But most of the people, you know, reckon it's thatch, and certainly on the historical builds, the proper ones that are done around in this area, they are all done with thatch. So here's the thing. Thatch in, at the moment in England, thatch, there's a, there's a national shortage of thatch. I've been in touch with proper thatchers and there is a national shortage due to a drought that we had. Last, we had a really good summer last mm. summer, but it was actually last April where there was a big drought, really good weather. Obviously it was great weather, but I don't think there was any rain, which meant that now all the thatchers have bought up the, the farmer's supply, the stock of thatch, it's all been bought up. So there's very little extra going out there. So uh, a friend of mine, Rich, has actually been in touch with, uh, wait for this, a 73-year-old Thatcher who's still in the in the job, still doing it. It's a bit of a dying trade, really, isn't it? Well, it's, it's sad, really. It's, it's it's one of those things, it's a craftsmanship it's, that's going. It's a craft it? that's fading, and it's a real shame. So any youngsters out there looking to keep the, the craft going and get into thatching, I think that'd be a really good idea. But anyway, so he got in touch with this Thatcher, this 73-year-old Thatcher, who said, who told him about this shortage. And actually, he was saying, he may, he may come over and help us. We can get the thatch off him and he may be able to teach us how to thatch. Because obviously there's basic ways of doing it or there's the proper way of doing it. So that's, that's not for certain yet. We don't know. We may end up having to wait. It's going to be a while. We might have to wait till July, he reckons, because that's when the long mm. straw uh, is cut, I believe. So that's when it's available, certainly. So we might have to wait until July. So there's going to be a big gap. But meanwhile, we can still do stuff on the inside of the Saxon house, which you can... You, you, do you want to show them what we, you've been well, doing? Well, yeah, while, while Mark's doing the cooking, he, he took over cooking duties today. Yeah. And uh, I thought, well, I don't want just anybody walking in there all over my nice Saxon carpet. <laughs> so I put all the stones that we sieved off when we Let's sieved, look. sieved Let's show you. Let's have a look. So all of these stones, well, this is what we were digging up, basically. And when we sieved out, you can see the size of some of these stones are huge. And I thought, right, save walking all the mud in there, but it, the more we walk, the more it get deep, there'll be a, a depression and thereby it will fill with water. So we got this, it's nice and hard. Hammered it down with a sledgehammer. So it's all been really bashed down right up to the edge of the timber. What he doesn't know in there is that I've done a sort of a Led, Led Zeppelin. Does anybody <laughs> know Led Zeppelin? The song, Stairway to Heaven. I know that song. Yeah, that yeah. the most famous one ever. The, I, the solo at the end is who awesome. Who likes Led Zeppelin as well? Because yeah. I do. Dazed and confused. Yeah. There's only one way to play it. That's loud. <laughs> 
So I've made my own stairway to heaven down here. <laughs> Let's have a look. Check it out. I've not quite finished the edge, but you won't break an ankle on it. Here we go. Oh, look at this. Yeah. So that's what you were splitting earlier. Yeah. Oh, that's much better, isn't that? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I think so, yeah. Just got two steps coming down like that. So what I did, I picked some antique tools up for Mike because he likes using all the old antique tools. And I found these massive, massive wedges here. Do you can see them? They are well used. Look at the mushroom on that one. The mushroom on that one is huge, so you know that's a good tool because it's been used a lot. They might even be Victorian. Hold on, guys. There is something. Can Mike zoom in on that? I didn't even notice that, but I just um, caught it in the sunlight there. Birmingham, I can read, and well, then I guess it's like the stamp number. Birmingham Steel, and it's got, it's like got its own number on it. And Very cool. This one's got nothing, but they are really heavy. So you drive these in and split the wood apart, and I'll tell you what is so easy, it's ridiculous. Now, the Scots pine is obviously all very knotty. It's twisty grain, Oh, isn't man, it? it's ridiculous twisty. stuff to try and get a straight grain cut on. It's impossible. But look, you split these right apart. Just ideal for me. Oh, I don't need to plane it and varnish it, do I? <laughs> it's just, you know, it's just two steps down. It made a pin big them difference. In, and all I've got to do, I've got to drive these stakes in in a minute. Drive these two stakes in, pin them to the side, and just saw the tag end off at the top. Tag then, end, such a fishing tag term. Tag end, that's a fishing term. Yeah. A piece of fishing line that's left over. It's called a tag end. Yeah. So uh, I've got to bash those in. Don't let me forget, otherwise yeah. I'm going to trip over there. <laughs> and then, you know, well, it is, as you say, basically um, the roof next, isn't it? It is. And, and obviously filling in these gaps is another job at yeah. some point. But you can see all the clay on the inside. Look, it's well sealed now. We've just got to well, reclay all that inside layer as well. It's a few days old now, so... That one's, yeah, that must yeah. be about a week now, this, that yeah, one? Yeah, this is, this is, you can hear it. It's going off. You can see all the boys, straw in it, we've used yet. lots of straw. Binding. That's good, I'm impressed. How are you feeling about the field so far, Dad? Exhausted, <laughs> it's a word. Well, what sort of annoying is this Scots pine, you call it, isn't it? Yeah, Scots pine, it's Knotty. hard to work with. And Mike had two pieces. I'll just show you, because I actually varnished it to bring the colour out. And just have a look about it, you can see the rings, and you can see the problems we're having with the knots. So as guide, there's a couple of bits of wood that Mike sawed off, and one went at an angle. And I varnished it there with polyurethane varnish just to bring the grain out in it. And you can see, even though that's only that diameter, there's about 13 rings on there. So we were saying in here, as a forest, what you know, how long before they cut them down? Is it 40 years? Would that be the average? But that should be about 13 plus the outside. They call it the cambium layer when I used to go to school. Yeah, yeah. So you count the rings up. I counted 13 there. That would make a nice coaster, wouldn't it? It would do, actually, yeah. And then this one, as you can see here, this is this is our problem wood. It's <laughs> about four inch diameter, and that's most of what we've got here, all the dead wood we're using. You've got on the side here, the knots. I don't know if you can see those knots around the edge. That's the knots there. That's where the branches would come out for those. That's where they grow yeah. out. They would actually be that way up, and they grow out up here. If I turn it over where I varnished it, you can <laughs> see the peculiar sort of circle there at each one of these rings is the knot coming out from the side. And that's what's so that, difficult. That's what happens, because you put, the, say, the splitting wedge or the axe in there, it hits one of these, kicks off, right, it? and it kicks off at an angle. It does not go straight through the grain. So, you know, it's just, just, the, way, it's just the way the tree's pine, made. Pine is difficult to, mm. to split, to be honest. It is a really it's tricky tough. wood. It is tough, you can see by the, the stairs here. Yeah. But those, if I had taken a piece of that home, you could make some nice coasters with that, couldn't you? That's a lovely one, that yeah, one, yeah. it's come out nice, come out really good, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, well, we've done well. I think we're going to fly the drone a bit, actually, get some shots. We have an injury, people. We have a health and safety. Get go and call them. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. Wasn't it's throbbing. It? It's throbbing. Mike's going to explain what it is. But we've had a bit of a, a bit of a catastrophe in our photographic experience trying to get you guys better shots. Look at that. That was that, that was I a thought drone accident. I thought he had broken this finger, 
and I'd lost that That's one. That's crazy. So, so he'll explain it. So we were just flying the drone. Hopefully you saw those a few of the drone <laughs> shots. And we were just flying over here. And usually I fly it on GPS mode just because I want it to come home. And if I'm out camping, I want it to come back. But I think the problem with flying it on GPS mode here in a dense woodland is it's constantly fighting to find the GPS signal. So I flew it home. I said, like, fly home, back to the home point. And I think it lost GPS and then found maybe one satellite further away and it started flying miles away and I said to dad here it goes here it goes we're losing it and it's running out of battery and then it just hovered about 20 feet from where it was meant to land and it just went up and I knew it was wrong then because I'm pressing down and it's going up and I said dad this is going to be bad so dad you got a stick or something didn't you no I was chopping he was chopping a stick we were chopping a piece of log there for a stake to go in there and luckily, there's one giant tree behind us. Yeah. And it just went straight up level with the trunk, didn't it? Went and it up. Kept bouncing and banging. It, it hit. It. Luckily, it was a pine tree, so it was yeah. just dicing off the needles. It wasn't yeah. actually getting too caught up. But this tree was way too high for us to ever get it back. Oh, we no, we would have had to get a tree surgeon in. And I said, uh, I said, oh, don't worry, Dad, it's done. Like, it's up there. And then he said, he's going, no, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. And it's dicing with the, and it's dicing away all the branches and all the pine needles are falling off. And then it flips or something, it comes upside down. And it Screams came at like at 30 miles an hour straight for Dad. I'm looking at it. <laughs> it absolutely like, it was like it knew it wanted to get you. It was like the Tom and Jerry cartoons. Yeah. You know when it's, <laughs> he's going to get splatted. And I thought, I thought, oh my God, I've got to save my son's $600, $800 plane. Oh. And about 20 feet up, I went, shh, save yourself, chum. And I put the stick up over my face. It and unfortunately, because so it was upside down, it chunked out Monsieur oh, Pullen's finger. It was so funny. It was so bad yeah, at the same funny. time. Because so no, <laughs> Dad yeah. had this stick and last minute you could tell he changed his mind. <laughs> <laughs> save it was like... save the GPS. Save this expensive machine. <laughs> so that... <laughs> <laughs> it just picked him out. Honestly, it picked it's him out of the whole bullet. woodland. It just came in. <laughs> Maybe it thought oh, you no, were the no, home point. Is. No, it did. you know why? <laughs> why? Oh, no. Why? GPS. What? First two letters. GP Grimford. <laughs> it just went. The GP. It just, just missed the S out. <laughs> it went from, honestly, it was like an angry bee. It absolutely Full went power, from. Wasn't it? Uh, one of the propellers flew off. <laughs> the battery went flying, but luckily it's still intact. But I'm, I'm going to have to go and check that out at home because that was lethal. Yeah, because I'll, I'll be keeping it inside the house, <laughs> but you won't. Yeah, no, that was really crazy. Anyway, thank you so much for watching uh, this episode, guys. It's been a, it's been a quite a long one, I guess, but it's been really fun. Yeah, we've yeah. made some right, up until now, but we've made some great progress on the on the clay walls. They're going to hopefully dry. We're going to tarp them up now for a few days. Let us know if that's probably the right or wrong thing to do, because if not, we'll come back out here and take the tarp off. But I think it's probably wise to tarp it. And then the next step is going to be... New GPS. The we might, yeah, we might do one more episode where we actually do a bit of interior stuff. But uh, yeah. other than that, we cannot do this roof, I think, until July, which sucks. But it's the way it is. We're trying to do it properly, and we really want to get hold of some thatch. If not, it's going to be something a little bit more available to us which won't look as good but again we just use it anyway but yeah i appreciate all your views all your comments all your likes if you do please drop a comment let us know what you thought of the episode drop a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to dad's channel ta fishing that's the one who winds the fishing with yeah. no fingers <laughs> there's links to everything in the description and merchandise and everything like that thank you so much for watching guys really appreciate it see you soon in the next episode <laughs>